going on guys welcome back to another exciting episode it is october so it's almost time to start bringing out those big swim baits again and start chasing after those true giant bass and obviously here in arizona i'm very fortunate enough to have trout eaters so when it comes down to fishing for those big fish and they eat trout one of my favorite techniques and way to catch them is throwing a big soft bait now Throughout the past few months on my Instagram, I've been posting pictures of some of my recent catches that I was able to get last season. A lot of those came on a Hog Hunter Magnum. And if you don't know what a Hog Hunter Magnum is, it's one of these guys here, just a big nine and a half inch soft bait that you fish on the bottom or really wherever you want to fish them. But I was catching a lot of fish on this bait and through those pictures, obviously I like to show the bait and show you guys like you know what i'm catching them on and and so on and so forth but a lot of guys were asking how i was rigging the hog hunter magnum and as you guys can see i've got a hook back here when you buy one of these new they come stock like this where it's just that normal jig hook here and there's nothing else on the bait so adding a stinger rig will definitely help because sometimes the fish aren't completely choking the bait like you know how they should be eating it but sometimes they just eat the back end or they come up and kiss the back end so having that stinger is super important for me at least so if you guys are ready let's get right into today's video so to clarify it doesn't have to be on a hog hunter magnum it can be on any soft bait i've done it on huds I've done it on soft tools. The only thing that you need for this is some type of line tie somewhere on the bait to rig it. So just for an example, Hog Hunter is just the ones that I have been rigging up lately and they get bit for me. So today we're gonna rig this guy up real quick and so let's get right into it. Okay, so what you're gonna need for this rigging is obviously the bait. You want your 50 to 65 pound braid I'm obviously going to be using this neon colored braid just for demonstration purposes. Just go with a natural green color, I would completely suggest. So you're going to put that to the side here. Your choice of hook, I'm going to be using a decoy size 2 quad on this. I think this hook fits on this bait really, really well. Then you have a paper clip that you cut. So it's got just this long piece here, two prongs, and that's what's going to keep your hook into the bait here. Put that to the side. Pliers and a good pair of dykes or braid cutters or whatever you use. So first thing, you're going to want to lay the bait out just like this. And you're going to take that braid. You're going to take one of the tag ends and just measure it out. Go past the bait and then a little bit off as well, right? So basically the reason why we're doing this much length is because on this bait, we want the knot to be here and the hook to be about yay. So, and why we do that is because if you take these two tag ends and you kind of bring them back together on each other, right? Because this is what we're gonna end up bringing if you compensate for the knot, if you double it over, it should be right there, right where we want it. So you kind of just want to double the length of where you want the hook to be. And that goes for if you want to butch brown rig it or if you want it even further back or if you are doing it on a much larger bait. Once you have the length, you're going to take your braid, grab your hook that you want, and then just run one of the tag ends through the hook and then just double it over. So grab the other tag end and bring them together. So you have two tag ends together, then you have the hook. And so you have this two line parallel going with each other. With those two tag ends, what you're gonna do is you're going to grab the two tag ends. You're going to grab your bait, go to where the, the hook hanger is that you're gonna use and just run both of them through. Grab the tag ends now, the two tag ends with one hand. The other hand, you're gonna grab that hook. So it should look something like this. 
you kind of want to make sure that the two tag ends are level so everything kind of comes together really well. That's kind of one of my pet peeves about this rig, but two tag ends are pretty level with each other. I've got the hook in one hand, and basically we're just going to do kind of like a uh, kind of like a clinch knot now. So you're going to take this hand, this hand, and you're just going to wrap it, the line around. You're going to wrap the line around each other. I do this about four to four to seven times. Kind of just depends. But we're going to do like five or six on this one. I've already lost count. So then you're going to grab the two tag ends now. And down here at the bottom, there's a little loop that you kind of created. You're going to want to open that loop up with your fingers. Just kind of pick at it. And it'll open up fairly easily. So we have this loop open, and what you're going to do is you're going to take those two tag ends, and you're just going to run those two tag ends back through that hole that you just made. So then grab it, run it through, just like that. Then grab the two tag ends, grab the hook, and then now you can cinch the hook down. Kind of just cinch it down hard and then you're going to grab the hook and you're going to pretty much put it back here and basically we have it right kind of where i wanted it to be so once we have that it should look something like this where the hook is pretty much right where you kind of want it the tag is a little bit long but we'll cut that off here in a second just make sure that it's cinched down a lot the way you feel like it's not going anywhere. Place the hook, place the hook kind of in that zone of where you want it to be. Which mine's gonna be about here. And then you're gonna take that paper clip now that you had. Here's the paper clip, and you're gonna just grab the hook here. Right? Right where those prongs are and you're just going to pull tight. You're gonna pull tight on the hook so it's nice, tight, and flush. And then you're gonna take that, that paper clip and you're gonna just stick it into the bait. And boom, that's not coming off, right? So the braid runs flush along the top of the head. The hook is not loose at all because you tighten it down really well. And that paper clip's gonna hold it in there. Now, what I do with that paper clip is you will grab your pliers and you kind of just squeeze that paper clip a little bit. And it, it it kind of just catches into the plastic just a little bit better. And I find that it sticks in there and stays in there on casts, on just burning through stuff. It holds really, really well. So with the tag in, just grab your braid cutters, whatever they were, and then just kind of snip it off, and boom. That's basically how I have my big soft baits rigged. The paper clips come in handy. You can make tons of them, so they're at the ready. So if you do hook a fish or you get snagged on something and the paper clip comes out, you can easily replace it pretty easily. And so that's how I like to rig my big soft swim baits. You don't want this hook like way back here. It's going to be way too far. It might kill a fish if you have it way too far back. I see a lot of guys where they'll rig a stinger. Where they'll rig a stinger way back here. And when the fish does eventually choke the bait, if it's too far back, it will get into the crushers and you'll kill the fish. So you want it at least somewhere a little bit further up but a lot of the bites that i get are in this area back here they're in this area in the back so like this one um you see bite mark down here at the tail bite mark up here um some bite marks here as well so having that stinger right here is absolutely money on these hog hunter magnums and again, it's going to take some time playing around with the length that you want. Uh, so just grab like 
some braid, so like a 300 yard spool of braid, and you can practice and get it down. It's gonna take you, you know, two or three different attempts to figure out the length, but once you get it, it's gonna be perfect and you're gonna love it. All right, so that's how I like to rig my big soft swing baits. Again, rigging it this way, and if you rig it correctly, it has not failed me, not one single time. And one of the biggest reasons why I like to have that stinger as long as it is, now you guys might be wondering like, Jeff, there's a hook hanger right here. Why didn't you just rig it to that? Well, I like having this extra bit of length. So when the fish is hooked and it pops out, you have all this nice dead space here. If you have it tight, the fish has a lot more leverage on, this is like a four and a half ounce bait. And so when you have it free swinging like this, there's not as much leverage for those fish to throw it. And again, you if you hook them really good, they never come off because this thing had, I mean, you can twist it forever. Like you twist it forever and it won't ever bind, right? It's still free flowing. There's no tension at all, right? So a fish can jump, it could throw, but since you have all this line out here, it just gives the fish pretty much no leverage to be able to throw that single hook. And when they eat it good on this decoy quad, for the most part, they'll get at least two prongs somewhere in them. Those two prongs, they got them stuck. They're not gonna be throwing the bait anytime soon. That's how I've been rigging them for years and years and years, and it's never failed me. If you guys have any other questions about how I like to rig the soft baits or anything like that, leave a comment down below. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, go out there and chase your dreams.